Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart. We're on Lesson 9 and we're talking about changes in communication. So in this lesson, you will discover new inventions made communication easier. So new inventions made communication easier. We can see some different types of inventions on our title page here, our warm-up. This is a very old telephone. It was really great when it was first invented, but now it's old-fashioned, right? This is a new invention. It's a cell phone. It's a really convenient invention. It's what we use nowadays. So changes in communication, how people communicate with each other. Let's take a look. First of all, we saw invention, right? On the previous slide, we saw an example of two inventions the telephone, an old telephone and a modern day telephone. Well, an invention is something new or a new way of doing something. So it's interesting to think about that. Invention isn't just something new, that's an object, right? It's an object. If you create something new, that's an object, like a telephone or a cell phone. But take this out. Check this out, a new way, a new way of doing something. That is a method. So inventions can be physical objects, things we touch or use, but they can also be things we don't touch, just things that we do, right? It's not something we can look at, it's not something we can pick up, it's just a way of behaving or a way of doing something, a method. So inventions are really two types, object, a physical thing, or a method, a way of doing something. And if you think of a new way of doing something, that's an invention too. By the way, it's very interesting. We have many words in this uh, unit that, start, that end with T-I-O-N, invention, invention. Whenever you see T-I-O-N, you know that that word is a noun. Many of these words are also used as verbs, and we drop ION, we say to invent, right? So invention is a noun, to invent, right? We, t we get rid of ION, we have a verb, to invent. So if you make something new, or you think of a new way of doing something, you are inventing, you have an invention. Okay, we'll see many words like this in today's lesson. Let's take a look at the next one. Tool. A tool is a thing. It's a thing, so it's an object that helps people do a job. When you do your job, what is your job? You are students, right? So your job is to do homework. What tools do you use to do your job? You probably use paper, right? A notebook and a pencil. Those are your tools. Those tools help you do a job, your homework. But there are many jobs, aren't there? And many different tools. These are typically many what we think of when we think of tools, right? A paintbrush for a painter who wants to paint something. A wrench for a plumber who wants to fix something. These are all tools that people use to do their job. It helps them do their job. Okay. Ah, here's another I-O-N word, T-I-O-N, education, right? Education is teaching or training people and the things people learn. So really we've got two, two parts to this definition. Teaching or training people, that's one part, and the things people learn. The things people learn, that's the second part. Okay? So uh, education is all of that. Right now we are involved in education. What we're doing right now is education. I am educating you guys, right? Education. Education is a noun, but to educate is a verb. Educate. So you see, we can take many of these ION verbs, which are nouns, and make them into verbs, right? Education. We are involved in education right now. I am educating you. So, good word, education. Okay, let's move on. Information, another T-I-O-N word, right? There's so many of them, right? Information, facts 
or details that you know about something. So how many facts and details do you know? You probably know a lot of information, right? Especially if you've been studying these books uh, quite a bit, right? So we've been learning a lot of information, facts or details. If you look at something, of course, he's looking at very specific facts and details about something. But when we think about science, you know, about the earth or about insects or animals or people, those are facts or details. We know about those subjects. That is information. Now, as we are doing, we're looking at these words and we see that they are nouns. What is the verb form of information? What is the verb form? If you guess to in form, right? So to inform. To inform is like to tell somebody about something, to tell them about the facts or details that you know you're going to tell somebody else. You will inform them. Right now, I am informing you, right? I'm informing you about this word information and many other words as well. Okay, so let's move on. Communication, really long word, right? Of course, we have T-I-O-N again. There's so many of them, right? In English, we have, this is a very common ending for many words. Shun, communication, communication. Okay, so what is communication? The way, the way it's a method, right? It's a method. People share ideas and exchange information. So when we talk, when we inform each other, when we educate people, we share ideas, we exchange information, right? Uh, so teachers or parents will educate children, right? Or uh, uh, children will inform their parents about their day, right? They will tell them, they will give them the facts or details about something that happened to them. So we are always exchanging our ideas, aren't we? We communicate with many people around us every day. And I just use the verb to communicate. To communicate. We communicate with each other every day. That is communication. We call this process, this method, communication. The action is to communicate. So we are communicating right now, right? Okay, let's move on. We have another word here, machine. A machine. A machine is a tool. Remember we talked about tools before? We saw the pictures of the tools, but those tools we saw before are very simple. They don't have really many moving parts, maybe just one part that moves. But a machine is a complex machine. It's a complex tool. It has many parts and it's used for a particular job. And another thing about a machine is that you can turn it on. You use electricity and it works and it does something for you. In fact, machines do work instead of people, right? With machines, we can do so much more than we can do with just simple tools and one person or a few people. Machines can work very quickly and they can do dangerous jobs and they can uh, produce many amazing things. This machine here is busy making a car. So machines are complex tools, not simple tools, but complex tools that are used for a particular job, a certain job. For example, a printing press. A printing press is an example of a machine, right? A printing press is a machine that is used to make books or newspapers. So if you have your books, right, you have a book in front of you right now, right? How was that book made? It was made on a really big machine called a printing press. Also, when you get your newspaper, right, at your house, if you get a newspaper delivered to your house, that newspaper is printed on a printing press. Let's take a look of a printing press in action. This is a printing press here. This is the paper. Let's take a look. Wow, that's really fast, isn't it? It's going really fast. And look at how big this machine is. It's really big and it's coming up through here and the drums have different colors and they're putting the ink on the paper as the paper goes through. It's really fast and 
Of course, this machine can make many books or many newspapers very, very quickly, much faster than people can if they didn't have a machine. So machines make our lives easier. They allow us to do our work very well, very quickly, and to make many, many things in a short period of time. So that's an example of a printing press. Now let's take a look at another uh, very old tool. Okay, this is a much older tool. A slate. A slate is a writing tablet. Of course, a long time ago, you know, people really didn't have paper. They may have had something they could have carried around a piece of charcoal or a piece of, uh, 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 of something around with them, and they called a slate. And they used chalk to draw on it or to write on it. So people would use a slate to, to write on it, and they could pass it to another person, and they could take it uh, on uh, very far away, and another person could read the message. So this is a very old style of communication, right? Not many people use slates nowadays. Sometimes we use slates for fun, but it's not really practical. Normally we use notebooks and paper instead of slates. Okay. This is a chart showing how communication has changed over the years. Here we have communication inventions, right? We talked about inventions. Inventions are objects, usually machines, not always, but also ways of doing things. In this case, of course, we're talking about objects, and we are talking about ways to communicate. There's many different inventions here. In 1876, can you imagine that long ago? That was a long time ago, right? Almost 150 years ago, almost 150 years ago. The telephone was invented. Who invented the telephone? Do you remember? That's right. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell. I'll just write his last name here. Bell. Bell invented the telephone in 1876. Then in 1902, the radio was invented. The radio was invented and people were able to hear uh, another person's voice from a long, far, far away, and they didn't have to have wires, right? The telephone, you needed a wire to connect one telephone to another telephone. But the radio, you didn't need wires. People spoke in one place, and their sound went through the air, and you could pick it up on a radio. Really great invention. Well, the radio, of course, came before the television. The television was invented in 1927. The television was different from the radio. How? You could hear the radio. What could you hear? You could hear voices. But with the television, you could hear voices and see pictures. This was a really big deal, of course, in 1927. Amazing! You could send pictures through the air. People were really surprised at this invention. It was like magic, right? Now, nowadays, we think, well, it's normal. But think about that. A long time ago, these things were new, amazing inventions. People were very amazed. They thought it was like magic. How can you send pictures through the air? Nowadays, we don't think about it. But a long time ago, they were very amazing inventions. Of course, nowadays, uh, we may not use the radio or television so much. Some people, we still use the telephone a lot, but more and more, People are using what? In 1994, the internet was invented or uh, became used by many, many people around the world. And more and more people are using the internet to listen to uh, uh, sound or to look at pictures. You might use the internet to look at your favorite music videos, right? On YouTube or something like that. So the YouTube is re kind of replacing all of these other things. Also, you can use the internet to talk to people using different uh, uh, programs. You can talk from one person in Korea, you can talk to somebody in Canada or Australia or Europe over the internet. So you see these different inventions progress through time and things are getting better and better. You guys are actually very lucky. You live in a time where there are many, many inventions that are already in use. But think about that, a hundred years ago, there a lot of the inventions that you use now, they weren't in existence, right? So you're kind of lucky. You have a very convenient life. Think about that sometimes, about all the inventions that are around you. Maybe when you get older, you can make an invention yourself if you think about some way to make life easier or more convenient. Okay, let's move on. 
Okay, we have our word matching exercise here. We have our words and we have our definitions. We need to match them together. Let's take a look at the words. Remember, some of these are kind of long, but many of them end in T-I-O-N, shun. Let's practice. Invention, invention. Tool, that's easy, right? Tool. Education, education, okay? Information, information. Communication, communication. Really long, right? Communication. Machine, machine. Okay, those are our words. Let's match them to the definitions. Number one, a thing that helps people do a job. So it's a thing that helps you do a job, very specifically. So think about the examples I gave you. A pencil, a piece of paper, right? We saw the paintbrush, we saw the wrench. What is a thing that helps people do a job? Of these words, what can we say? We can say a tool. A tool is a thing that helps people do a job. Now, it's true, if you chose invention, that could also be an answer, right? But tool is a better uh, choice for this because invention has a special meaning. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, but tool is specifically a thing that helps people do a job. Okay, number two, facts or details that you know about something. So if you have some knowledge, you have facts or details in your mind and you know those facts or details, you know that about something. What are those facts and details? What do we call that, right? If you have those facts or details in your mind and you want to tell somebody, you say, I want to inform you, right? So what's the noun form? Of course, it's information. The facts and details that you have in your mind, uh, those are, that is information. That is information. Information is non-count. Don't say informations. Right? But we say those facts and details, that is information. Okay, number three, something new or a new way of doing something. So something new or a new way of doing something, that of course, when you invent something, you have made an invention. Okay, that's invention. So of course, an invention can be a tool, but when it's first invented, when it's when it's new and it's a new way of doing something, we say, of course, it's an invention. That's a particular meaning right there because it's new. It's a new way of doing something or it's something new that you made. Okay, let's move on to number four. The way people share ideas and exchange information. So you want to share ideas with somebody. You want to exchange information. You want to communicate with somebody. Of course, the way that you communicate is called communication. Communication. That's the way, the method that you share ideas or exchange information. We call that communication. Okay? And there's a lot of words you could use. Are you good at communication? Right? Are you good at communication? That means you have good communication skills. Right? So communication. Number five teaching or training people and the things people learn. So when we're talking about teaching people or training people, by the way, what's the difference between teaching and training? Teaching and training, that's interesting. There's a little bit of a difference there. When you teach somebody, you're giving them information. You're giving them like theoretical knowledge. You're telling them about the theory of something, the idea about something. Right now, I am educating you. Training somebody is teaching somebody specifically how to do something. If I'm going to teach you how to swim, then I'm training you how to swim to do a skill. So teaching is more about information or knowledge. Training is about how to do something, like a skill, like swimming or rock climbing or even scuba diving, right? That's training. Okay, so that's a little bit different. But all of those, whether you're teaching somebody information or you're teaching somebody, training them how to do something, we call this what? Education, right? So it's education. 
And the person who is teaching or training is an educator. They are educating the other people, their students. So right now, I am educating you about these words. Number six, a tool with, a, with complex, complex, not simple, complex parts that is used for a particular job. And also, when we talked about this, you usually use electricity with it. You turn it on and it starts to vibrate, right? It starts to hum. It's ready to work. What do we call that? Of course, that is called a machine. So a tool with complex parts that is used for a particular job. And usually it needs energy to work, like electricity or some other type of energy in order to work. Okay, let's move on to our chart here. We have inventions in making books. Now, books are an interesting way to communicate, aren't they? We saw the slide before of many different inventions. We saw the telephone, the radio, uh, uh, television, and the internet. Books are another invention that was made in order to communicate. Now, books are special because books are a way to communicate over a long period of time. You can read books that were written 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago. Books are a good way to communicate over a long period of time. Of course, we can read them now, but it's also an interesting uh, thing to, to think about. When you write something down, people can read your book, and if your book is popular and many people like it, they will read it for many, many years after you've written that book. So books are an interesting way or an, a good invention uh, for communication. It's a way to communicate. Now, how were books invented? What was the history of books? What was the history of writing? Well, a long, long time ago, ancient Egyptians, ancient Egyptians, we're talking like 2,000 years ago, more than 2,000 years ago, even 3,000 years ago, ancient Egyptians wrote on papyrus, papyrus. What is papyrus? Papyrus is kind of a type of paper that was very difficult to make. Uh, to pronounce this word, think of papa, you know, papa, the sailor man. Papyrus, okay? Papyrus. And they wrote on this uh, material and they could save it. Now, papyrus didn't last for a long time. Um, they had to be very careful. If it got wet or if it was in a wet, uh, humid climate, it wouldn't last for many many years. But if it was very dry, it would last for a very long time. And sometimes in the very dry desert, like in Egypt and other places in the Middle East, we can still find old papyrus that was left for thousands of years. And we can read what people wrote. Very interesting. Now, later on, paper, which was easier to make and it was uh, uh, lighter and more convenient to use, paper was invented in China a little bit later, well, a little bit later, a long time later, many hundreds of years later. After they invented paper, right, of course you could write a lot on it, but paper was invented, people would write on the paper, but pe each person had to write on the paper. So if you wanted to make many books, you had to have many people, and all those people would sit there and they would write the letters very carefully, and that's how books were made. This was very time consuming, right? Imagine a machine that could speed up that process and make that process much quicker and much easier. Well, in 1448, Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press in Europe to make that really fast, a lot faster. Now, this is not Johannes Gutenberg, right? This is a photograph, and they didn't have cameras in 1448, but this is an example of an old printing press that they used, right? It was, it was a machine. It made the job easier, but it was still difficult to use, right? You had to have a lot of strength to, to, to move it around and press on the paper, but it was a machine that allowed people to print books much faster than everybody sitting around and, uh, and drawing uh, on the pages. So the printing press was the first machine that allowed people to print books, many books in a short period of time, and the books would always be the same as each other. You can make copies now. You can make one copy exactly the same as the original copy. Before, you couldn't do that because even if it's the same person, they have to make a new book by hand. You can't always do it exactly the same. Okay, so the printing press was invented in 1448. It really, uh, that's when we really started 
uh, the explosion of making books. And more and more books became popular, people could read more and more, and more and more people became educated. They were able to get an education much easier with books. Okay, let's take a look at the pictures and write the word that best describes them. Okay, so what have we got going on here? We have many different pictures, and what are these pictures showing? They are showing a way of sharing information, right? So let's take a look here. There's a little girl, what is she doing? She's holding her hand to her head like this, and if we look closely, we can see she has a cell phone in her hand. So she is doing something with another person we can't see right now, okay? That's the word that we need. What is she doing? What act or what thing is she doing right now? She's engaged in some type of process. Over here in the middle, these people, we can see both people, they're both engaged in it, and what are they doing? They're using their hands to talk, right? And this is what some people will do if they cannot hear. People who are deaf or mute, they cannot speak. Some people cannot hear, some people cannot speak. And so they need to use their hands to do whatever this is. This, by the way, is called sign language, this picture. Sign language. Sign language is the way that people will communicate with their hands, okay, and their bodies too. Okay, so they are engaged in sign language, but they're doing something. Now, this woman here, she's using the computer, and look at all these pieces of paper flying out of her computer. I'm just kidding, that's just a drawing, right? She is sending letters. She is sending email to many of her friends, and maybe she's getting email too. Now, all of these people are doing the same thing. What are they doing? Do you remember the word that we used, uh, that we learned earlier? Of course, they are all engaged in communication. They are all using different forms of communication. So as you can see, communication has many different styles. You can talk on a cell phone. You can use sign language with a, a friend or with somebody you know. You can use the computer to communicate with other people. All of these people are communicating. They are engaged in communication. They are engaged engaged in communication. Engaged means that they are involved. They are doing something. What are they doing? They are involved in communication. They are engaged in communication. Okay, so that's of course the topic for our lesson of course today as well. Changes in communication. Okay, let's take a look at our true-false questions. We need to circle T for true, F for false for each one of these statements. Number one, Inventions are facts or details that you know about something. Does that sound correct, right? So, inventions. What are inventions? Inventions are things or ways of doing something that are new. Somebody comes along and, and thinks of a new way of doing something, that's an invention. So, this doesn't sound right, right? Inventions are facts or details? No, inventions are new things or new ways of doing something. So this is false. If we want to make the sentence true, we can change one word. Do you know what word? That's right. If we change inventions to what? In for may shun. Aha, information. If we change inform to information, information are facts or details that you know about something. That's true right? But not inventions. So we have to change the sentence. Okay, number two. Paper was invented in Egypt. Paper was invented in Egypt. Remember that chart we saw? We talked about ancient Egypt, then we talked about China, then we talked about Johannes Gutenberg, right? What was the thing about China? We saw that paper was invented in China, not in Egypt, right? That's false. So it wasn't in Egypt, it was in China. Do you remember what the Egyptians used? What did ancient Egyptians use? Remember I told you about the cartoon character to remember the name? Papyrus. Papyrus. They used papyrus in Egypt, but paper was invented in China. Okay, number three. A printing press is a machine 
that is used to make books or newspapers. Is that true? Think about the video we saw earlier in the lesson, right? We saw that machine with the many pieces of paper running through and the, the little drums would put the ink on the paper and the paper was going through really fast and you could make many books and many newspapers. And what was that machine called? That's right, it was called a printing press. So this is true. This is a true statement. A printing press is a machine that is used to make books or newspapers. Okay, let's take a short break here and we'll come back and go over the reading section. Hello everybody, welcome back to the reading section. Of course, we're in Unit 9 talking about changes in communication. So of course, that's what our reading skill, our reading passage is about. The reading passage is people use tools to communicate. That is the topic sentence of our reading passage because that is the sentence that unifies our topic. What are we talking about? We're talking about using tools. Certain types of tools to do what? You use a tool to do a job. In this case, we're using a tools to communicate. So we're going to talk about tools, but we're also going to talk about changes in those tools, the different types of tools, and the history of the tools. And we can see that new inventions make communication easier. So actually, these two sentences tell us what our topic of the reading passage is. First of all, people use tools to communicate. Yes, more specifically, new inventions make communication easier. And remember, inventions are tools, right? Tools are types of inventions. So we see tools and we see inventions. People use tools to communicate. New inventions make communication easier. So what we're going to look at are inventions that were used in the past and inventions that are used in the present. Let's take a look. People in the past, so this is a long time ago, right? People in the past use slates. Remember we talked about slates? Slates are the, like a piece of a blackboard, really, uh, from your classroom. Don't do that. Don't take uh, the blackboard from your classroom. But it would be like a small piece of your blackboard that you could carry around with you. And you use chalk, and you wrote with it on chalk, right? So people use slates, chalk. They used ink with paper, not with slates. They used ink for writing. And that's what people did in the past. For hundreds of years, that was the only way to send a message to somebody far away, right? If you couldn't go there, you would have to write on a slate or write on a piece of paper and send it to that person. And that was the only way to communicate for hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay, in the present, things are different. Whew, things are easier, right? In the present, nowadays, people use computers and notebooks for writing. So you, of course, use notebooks for writing in class, and when you're doing homework, you use a notebook. Probably you use a computer very often as well. You can email people, and you can uh, talk to people all, all from far distances away using your computer, whether it's email, chatting, or whatever you're doing, right? You can use a computer or notebook for writing nowadays. The telephone and printing press are inventions that help communication. So here we see two inventions that they're talking about. One is the telephone. Number two, the printing press. These are two inventions. They are inventions that help communication, help people communicate, right? With the invention of the telephone, now people didn't have to write letters to each other. They could call each other instantly and talk to each other at the the very same moment. Wow! Right before they had to write a letter and send it and maybe it takes three months to get to the other person and then another three months to get back to you. Oh my gosh! But think about it. A telephone, now that you can call and talk right away. Amazing invention at the time. The telephone and printing press, of course, you can make many books at the same time. It didn't take so long to write each book by hand. Okay, so in the present, right, people use cellular phones, cellular phones to talk. We, of course, say just cell phones. It's much easier to say that. Cell phones. People use cell phones. Why? To talk. They use cell phones to talk. Same thing. 
The printing press is a machine that makes newspapers and books. Okay, so here we have like our sentence here, two inventions, the telephone. In the present, people use cell phones to talk. The other sentence, talking about the second invention, the printing press is a machine that makes newspapers and books. It makes them very quickly. Moving on, in the past, again we have here in the past, people got information. You get information from someplace. People got information by talking to other people. In other words, talking to people who were close by them or around them, right? So that was the way people communicated in the past, by talking to people who were next to them. Now, that's our difference, now newspapers and books are important for people to learn from. Nowadays, people can use newspapers and books to learn about things or facts, details that happened all far away, away. Especially when you can't talk to people who are far away, you can get a newspaper or a book and read about their life or what happened over there. Modern communication tools modern communication tools, the tools we use nowadays in order to communicate. Modern communication tools such as the internet are important to our daily life and education. Education, Such as means for example, right? Such as is like for example, modern communication tools, for example, the internet, such as the internet, are important. Of course, they're very important to our daily life and for our education. Think about how often you use the internet when you're learning about a new subject. There's so much information available at your fingertips. You can get a lot of information using the internet. Every day we use new inventions and important tools to help us communicate. So every day in our daily lives we use what? We use new inventions. We use important tools to help us communicate. So we use two things. In our life, modern life, people are inventing things so quickly, right? It seems like things are happening so quickly. Many new inventions are coming out. So we use new inventions almost every day. And we also use important tools that have already been invented a long time ago. We use those important tools. Why? To help us to communicate. Tools help us do our job or help us do something we want to do. Okay, let's take a look at our reading skill. As we can see in the reading skill, remember I kept underlining in the past and now? That's very important uh, to look at in terms of to compare and contrast. We can compare and contrast the past and the present. So the past and the present are different. And we can talk about how they are different. Let's take a look. People use slates, chalk, and beep for writing. That was in the past, right? We have to fill in these blanks. Our words are computers, books, ink, cellular phones, and communicate. So in the past, what did people use to communicate or for writing? What did people use for writing? They used slates. They used chalk. What else did they use? Did they use computers in the past? No, computers are a recent invention. Did they use cellular phones to communicate for writing? No, cellular phones are uh, a recent invention. Uh, did they use books for writing? Yeah, but they also used ink, right? When we looked at the passage, we saw that they used ink. They used slates, chalk, and ink for writing. This is a long time ago, right? Nowadays, in the present, people use what? And notebooks for writing. So nowadays, people will use computers and notebooks for writing because computers is a recent invention. It's an invention that belongs in modern times, in the present day. Okay. In the past, people got information by talking to other people. So talking to other people, communicating with other people. In the present, nowadays, people get information from newspapers, right? And what else do they get information from? They also get information from books, okay? So newspapers and books, nowadays people get information from those things. People use what to talk? So people can talk with each other, you know, even from a long distances, from far away. What do they use to talk 
to be able to communicate in that manner. Of course, they use cellular phones to talk. So they can use cellular phones to talk to each other. Now, these are things that are different, right? In the past, people use that. In the present, people do this. But on the bottom, this is one way that things have stayed the same. No change. In the past and the present, things have stayed the same. What is it? People use tools to what? What are they doing? What is all of this that we're talking about here? We're talking, of course, about communicate, to communicate. People use tools to communicate. We need to use the verb form, not communication, but remember the verb form is to communicate. And of course, the noun is communication, how people talk to each other, how people exchange ideas. That method is communication. What are people doing? They are communicating. So people use tools to communicate. Okay. Let's go over reading comprehension questions. How well do you remember the reading passage? Number one, inventions have made beep easier. We have to choose from A, B, and C. So we were just talking about this uh, subject just on the uh, last slide. It's the subject, of course, of our unit. Uh, are we talking about inventions have made telephones easier? That doesn't make sense. Inventions have made newspapers easier? They, it's very strange to say it makes an object easier, right? Telephones and newspapers are objects. What about C? Communication. Communication is a method of exchanging ideas, the way of exchanging ideas. So yes, if you're talking about method or the way of doing something, you can make that easier, absolutely. And inventions, of course, have made communication easier. That's our answer, right? Now, of course, inventions like telephones and newspapers, those are inventions, but those are inventions that have made communication easier. So it's kind of an interesting uh, uh, problem here, an interesting question, right? But be careful uh, because it, the inventions haven't made other inventions easier. Inventions have made communication easier. Number two, what is the most modern, most modern, the most recent communication tool. So we have to think about the history of communication. Remember the chart we saw a long time ago? Started off with a telephone, the radio, and then it went on. What was the most recent, the latest invention or communication tool? Let's take a look. A slate is a, sl well we have a slate, the internet, and a printing press. Which is the most recent? Okay, if we look at it, of course we can choose right away that the internet is the most recent out of the three. A slate was used a long time ago, right, with chalk. And a printing press was invented in 1448, Johannes Gutenberg, right? So those are old inventions, right? The newest, the most modern is the internet. Most modern means the latest or the most recent invention, something that has been invented just a little while ago, not a long, long time ago, okay? Okay. Let's move on to number three. The printing press is, what is the printing press? It's a tool, sure, it's a tool used to make movies and newspapers. So the printing press is a tool used to make movies and newspapers. Does that sound right? Newspapers, yes, the printing press does make newspapers, that's right. But does a printing press make movies? No. A camera makes movies, right? Not a printing press. So that's not correct. A is not correct, okay? It is a tool, but it's, and it does make newspapers, but it doesn't make movies. Okay, the printing press is a machine. That's true, a machine. Remember, tool and machine, are, can, you can sometimes use them in the same way, but remember, a, to, a machine is a specific type of tool. It's a complex, more complex than a simple tool. A machine that makes newspapers and books. Aha. Uh -huh. Is that true? Sure. The printing press is a machine. It has many complex parts. You turn it on using electricity, some form of energy. What does it do? It makes newspapers and books. Is that true? Absolutely. That is the correct answer. Let's look at number C. A communication tool that makes notebooks. The printing press is a communication tool that makes notebooks? 
that's not right. That sounds very strange. It's not a it's not a way to communicate. It's a machine that makes objects, right? It's not a tool that people use to communicate with each other. Thank goodness, because printing presses are so big and they're very expensive. We wouldn't use them to communicate with each other, right? We'd use them to make objects, to make newspapers and books. Okay, let's take a look at number four. The cellular phone. Cellular. Cellular. Okay, just say cell phone. Oh, it's very difficult to say cellular, but that's the full word, right? The cell phone and printing press. Oh, that's interesting. We're going to put them both together. The phone and the printing press? What are they? What do they have in common? What do they, what are they, how are they similar? Let's take a look. A, are inventions that help us communicate. Is that true? The cellular phone is an invention? Yep. The printing press is an invention? Sure. They help us communicate? Yeah, sure. The cellular phone helps us communicate. The printing press helps us communicate. So that's true, right? Both of these are inventions that help us communicate. Okay, B, were invented by Johannes Gutenberg. That's not true because Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press, but he did not invent the cellular phone in 1448, right? That was, uh, that was too long ago for the cell phone. Are machines that we use for writing, we use a cellular phone for writing? No, that's not right, okay? So obviously C and B are incorrect. A is our true answer, our correct answer. Okay, let's take a look at our chart again. We saw this chart before, let's fill it in. Again, these are communication inventions. Inventions that help us communicate. So they are inventions that are, have to do with communication. In 1876, we have a picture here. What was this invention that was uh, used to communicate in 1876? Do you remember? Of course, it's called the telephone. Telephone was invented in 1876 by Alexander Graham Bell, and it was a way of communicating with each other right away. Remember, before the telephone, if you wanted to talk to your friends or your parents or your relatives who were far away, you had to write them a letter. But with the telephone, you could talk to them right away through a wire. Now, in 1902, you could get rid of the wire right? No more wires. You didn't need a wire anymore. And you could uh, broadcast a message to many people at the same time. And of course, this invention was called a radio. So the radio was invented in 1902. In 1927, what was invented? Do you, this looks very old, doesn't it? It's very old fashioned. 1927, of course, this was a way to send not only sound, but also pictures through the air, and other people could pick them up. A very important uh, way to communicate, and this, of course, was called the television. Finally, in 1994, it's what we probably use. Most of us use it every day. Some of us use it too much, right? Don't use it too much, but use it wisely. And this, of course, is a way to um, use the Internet. This is the Internet. This was the invention of the internet in 1994. And of course, we use the internet for many, many ways of communicating, for talking to people uh, directly, for listening to music, for watching videos. We use all of these different inventions. We can use those on the internet. Okay, well that wraps it up for today. We've talked about Unit 9, Changes in Communication. We've been talking about how the method of communication has changed from in the past to now, and especially very important about the inventions that were used to help people communicate. Remember, it's really amazing that we're living in this time because we have so many inventions around us, and we have so many uh, inventions that make our life easier and more fun, really. Uh, so it, you're living at a very lucky time in history. Okay, well, anyway, that wraps it up for today. We'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.